Welcome back, Sports Nation and my champions. This is Eric from CSN, and today we'll be shifting our fantasy focus to the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to first start on the offensive side of the ball. We're going to start with the starting quarterback, Kirk Cousins here. He finished his QB 11 last year, ended up with a little over 4,200 passing yards, 35 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Being drafted relatively late here, 14th, 15th round, QB 21. And honestly, I think this is good value. I think this this number is probably about where he'll finish, right around that low end QB 1, high end QB 2 level. Three of the last four seasons, he put up similar numbers, except with the exception of the TD numbers, which went up. And I think that's because of the new weapon they have, Justin Jefferson. We'll talk about him in a little bit. I know there's a little bit of hype or chatter talking about Kellen Mond uh, taking over the job, the third round rookie from Texas A&M. I don't see that happening at least this year. And I'll tell you why. I don't think Mond is ready to take over right now. And you have a decent, pretty decent quarterback in Kirk Cousins here to lead the offense. Two, more importantly, Cousins is under contract for this year and through the 2022 season. He's going to make $21 million this year. And next year, he's scheduled to make 35. And as of now, he hit barriers through March. So that $35 million in 2022 is fully guaranteed. Don't see this organization benching him unless he has really poor performance or he's hurt. I think he's going to perform similarly like he has in the past few seasons there. And if anything, Mund will probably take over sometime in the 2022 season. I think you're safe to be drafting him as your starting quarterback this year. Next guy I want to talk about is Dalvin Cook. Ended up as running back two last year to Alvin Kamara. Being drafted as the running back two slot this year in these drafts. Second only to Christian McCaffrey. And look. Uh, this guy's an elite stud. You can tell by this play here. That's his bread and butter play where he... He has the vision and he can squeak and find those holes. And then it seems like he has a second gear and gets out there and goodbye. That's a touchdown. He's done this on numerous times, both inside and outside. And to me, I think he's the best right now. He's the best fantasy back uh, in the league. McCaffrey is good, obviously, but he's coming off of multiple injuries. His quad, uh, his AC joint, his shoulder. He had a high ankle sprain last year. He only played three games. As far as Alvin Kamara, his bread and butter is uh, more so on the receiving side, which is good, especially in PPR leagues. But Drew Brees is retired. It's going to be interesting to see how the Saints offense goes without him. The only other guy that probably can compare to the elite level of running backs is Derrick Henry. And he's gotten like over 650 carries the last two seasons. And I would be concerned about him wearing down this year. So I would draft Dalvin Cook if I had the top overall pick. And if he's at, if he's still there at three, go and grab him. Next guy I want to talk about is Justin Jefferson. Came in and ended up as wide receiver six for his rookie campaign. Ended up with 88 catches, 1,400 yards, and seven touchdowns. And, only, and the only reason he didn't get Offensive Rookie of the Year is because Justin Herbert was quarterback and, you know, he set the record for rookie quarterback touchdowns. But he is an absolute stud. He's going at the end of the second round, wide receiver seven. And you know what? This guy could be the next big thing. If you watch him play, he's got talent unloaded. And, and I think it, it kind of reminds me of a similar trajectory, I would say, as Julio Jones. I think this guy is probably going to end up being in that top three elite maybe if not this year third season but just on what he did in his first season was very impressive and that leaves uh adam thielen on the other side there who who was impressive as well finished at wide receiver 10 he's going as uh, a wide receiver 18 into the fourth round and to be honest i gotta question this a couple things one i think in ppr leagues this is probably okay because he's really touchdown dependent. Only only had 74 catches uh, last year, 925 yards, but he had 14 touchdowns. Very touchdown dependent guy. I think he's a better play in standard. And then also Justin Jefferson, I mean, he's taken over already in a, in a rookie season as the wide receiver one on this team, the top threat. So I think this is decent. I would probably pass on him though in PPR leagues um, for this price. Next guy I want to talk about is Irv Smith Jr., the tight end. He ended up with 30 receptions, 365 yards, five touchdowns, tight end 21 last year. Going relatively late, about the 12th round, tight end 14. 
and I do like this value. I think his potential could be anywhere from 10 to 12, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. I think talent-wise, he's got it. Not only that, Kyle Rudolph is not there anymore. He went to the Giants in free agency, and he had about about the same amount of uh, yards as Irv Smith last year. He only had one touchdown, though. And I think Smith's going to pick up a majority of that workload. Uh, I know they do have Tyler Conklin there. I think he'll get some of that, but I think the majority of it's going to go to Irv Smith. So I would say he's a fringe tight end one right now and, and worthy of a draft pick, especially that late. Now, as far as sleepers go, kind of sort of sleepers, I would say not. More so with Alexander Madison. And I would say he's kind of the ultimate handcuff. I know handcuffing was a big thing in fantasy a while back. I really don't agree with it with this exception because Madison can give you almost as much production as Cook if Cook goes down. He's done it before. He's put up pretty big numbers. And I say if you draft Alvin Cook, you have to go get Alexander Madison as, as a handcuff in your draft. He's going around the 13th, 14th round. And then BC Johnson, uh, he's put up, he's kind of been hot and cold. And I would say he he's more of a waiver wire pickup if one of these other guys goes down as far as the defensive side the vikings ended up horribly at 27th last year in fantasy they're currently being drafted about the 14th round 17th defense off the board now they only ended up with a paltry 23 sacks and 15 interceptions last season and of course uh the loss of daniel hunter was a huge part of that he was out with a neck injury didn't play all last year previous two seasons he had 14 and a half sacks each they also went out in free agency and got dalvin tomlinson and for some interior rush presence from the giants harrison smith had five interceptions last year but you know i still don't think this is a good defense to draft uh, similar to the chicago bears in my last video we're looking for a top 12 defense and I don't think they can do it. Maybe scratch near that. I think there's a lot better options now. Again, just like the Bears defense, if you're into streaming mode and you find some good matchups, go for it. But overall, I would just stay away from this. I don't think they're draftable in a 12-team league. If you did enjoy this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Like, share, and subscribe. Put your comments in the section below. I read every single comment and I respond to just about every single comment as well. If you want to catch up to our 31 and 31 video series, click on these links right here. Thanks for watching and supporting this channel, and as always, play like a champion.